Hello world! In this video, I'll be showing off a simple password cracker using Python. As a reminder, this video is for educational purposes only and only to be used under an authorized ethical hacking uh, scenario. So let's get into the code. But first, welcome to the 167th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. And so um, if you're new to my channel, one of the primary things I want for Shane is to have, uh, have my back. So cybersecurity, both defensive and offensive. And so that's what we'll be looking at today. This is the sixth video in my cybersecurity playlist. So if you want to watch the other videos, you can click here. And please consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching me build this digital assistant. All right, now let's get into the code. So first we're going to import hashlib and this is a standard library so you shouldn't have to uh, import or uh, pip install this. And then what you should have is a some sort of list of passwords, right? And so what I did was this hero right here in GitHub saved all of the passwords that emerged from the Ashley Madison password hack and if you're unfamiliar with um, Ashley Madison it was a website where people can um, basically have affairs and um, it turned out most of these people were just robots they were um, sexting with but anyways it turned out that even when people are doing some of the most criminal activities they had very weak passwords so somebody put it all in a text file I can leave a link in the description to that and so I saved it in the root folder of this PyCharm project. So the first thing we do is we're going to create a, a variable called, I just called it pass for password underscore file name. And I saved it as ashley-madison.txt. And you can see it's in my root folder. If you saved it somewhere else, go ahead and give it its full path. So something like this. Um, desktop, something like that. Um, PyCharm is actually like that. So C uh, desktop, you know, whatever the full path is. But since it's in the root of the folder, oh, there. For this, since we're not actually actively hacking a site, um, the password is going to be uh, Boomer with three O's. So surprisingly, um, that was a. Uh, Oops. All right, my computer's going slow, so it's not going to find it. But anyways, that was a um, available password. It was Boomer with three O's. We're going to skip this. This is just for me to show you. And then what you have to do is encode it, right? Because some passwords might have weird, um, weird freight. Um, what's it called? weird symbols and stuff and so we just want it recognized so when we're comparing it to all these words in this password file to a real password we're going to encode it so we're going to take this password which is boomer with three o's and we're going to encode it so i created a variable called in, in encoded underscore password or enc underscore password equals password dot encode and then you're going to pass it this utf dash eight which is the encoding uh, style I want it to encode at. And then passwords are actually saved as hashes. So if your password is boomer at your work, I apologize for calling you out, but that's not how it actually looks like in the database. So let's look at what a hash looks like. And basically it's just a hexadecimal representation of a password. And that is what's used to, there we go, oops, print password, we want password hash. Okay, so let's run this again. So this is a hexadecimal, and this is what you'll find in password databases. So when you're on a website, they're not actually saving your password, they're saving this hash. Now they can easily convert it back and forth, but when they save it, they just save it like this. 
and so that's how passwords look so um, so to get that hash we are going to use um, password underscore hash equals hash lib which is what we imported here dot md5 and then we're going to pass it this encoded password we're going to strip it um, of any kind of like spaces after or um, line spaces dot hex digest and then put it back in parentheses and that's how you get the hash so we're actually going to be comparing hashes because if this was a real simulation we wouldn't be looking up the word we would be looking up the hash alright so then what we're going to do is say pass file equals open then we're going to pass it this file name right here ashleymadison.txt now we can pass it directly here as a string we could just copy and paste this but it's good to keep it as a variable in case you want to use it somewhere else and then we want to set the permissions to read so we're going to pass it r and so for each word so basically for each password right that's a single password that's a single password in the password file we're going to encode this word so the encoded word equals word which is right here each one of these dot encode utf8 so that way we're comparing similar encoding and we're going to do the same thing we did up here with the password so the encoded hash equals hash lib dot md5 then we're going to pass it this encoded word dot strip dot hexadigest right and then all we're going to do to say if the password hash so the hash version of this password which is currently boomer equals the encoded hash so it's going to go through every single word and if it meets it I'm just going to print a simple thing that says this three letter agency as a joke has been hacked the password was and we'll show the word unencoded right the actual word and then we'll quit right because then we would create another code where we access the system remotely and we hack it like you see on the movies um, if we don't find it we're gonna say the three letter agency has a strong password alright so now let's check it so we're going to check with boomer with three O's instead of two alright see how quick that was this three letter agency has been hacked the password was boomer alright so this list is pretty extensive it has thousands and thousands of passwords um, so I picked one towards the end in the Y's and so let's try that one and see how fast that goes so I found one called Yo Mama that's right that was an actual password used okay and it still found it and that was pretty fast right that was relatively fast and so if you're concerned about this that somebody with this just uh, 24 lines of code can possibly guess your uh, password I would recommend this passwords generator right here so this is a strong password generator so if your company has 16 and you can use all of these symbols numbers lowercase uppercase then you just generate a password and there you go and it even gives you like a, a weird password to remember it I, I would not remember this one and so I did that prior to uh, recording this video and it created this weird one the number two capitals B N E parenthesis T M uh, right carrot or left carrot right and so let's try that okay this three letter agency has a strong password so it wasn't able to find the password in this uh, sorry there are curse words in here as well into this uh, file right here so like I said if it goes through every single word in this password file if the password meets the uh, one of the words then you you've, you know you can uh, create a program to hack if you will and if not then this program will quit so the goal that most hackers have is to create the most massive dictionary and another trick they use and again this is for ethical hacking 
is to find out how many letters the company has. So, um, for example, if you have a company that only has six digits, then you type in six here, which is considered weak, and then you can create your own random generator, password generator, to supplement the world's largest database, and it can do both of those. And you just create a larger and larger library as you become a more advanced advanced hacker. So that's the extent of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a like and uh, leave a comment if uh, you have any discussion you want to add to password cracking. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.